If you watch a lot of golf on YouTube and you've ever wondered what it looks like on this end of the screen, probably a little bit like this. Now, plenty of you have asked me about the making of these videos, so I thought today I'll give you a little behind the scenes look at it. Only thing is, loads of people in the clubhouse are looking at me like I'm crazy. So I'm gonna tee off first and then we'll get into it. Obviously, I'm only new to YouTube, so I'm a bit small time in the production. I imagine the likes of Rick Shields has a couple of cameramen, someone doing a drone, extra pair of hands and things like that. I'm more of a camera and a tripod sort of guy at this point. Be good. I find course vlogs the easiest type of video to make because mostly it's just go out with one ball and play golf. So right now I'm going to show you that. When I started filming my rounds of golf, I started with a camera and a tripod. And the only really tricky thing to do is to sometimes work out where to put the camera in order to actually get a good view of the shot that you're trying to hit. For me, everything got a lot simpler when I discovered the iRange Sport, this pole. And basically, you can transfer to using your camera to film the rounds. You put it onto the back, there's a magnetic plate, and you can have it in landscape, or you can switch it to portrait like that, lightweight, easy to carry. So it makes it perfect for filming rounds of golf. Also for lessons, looking back at your golf swing or for other social media type of things. I'll put a link to this below just in case it interests you. After I finish my round of golf, I'll take all the footage home and individually add in all of the shot tracers and the extra information like distances carried and things like that, that hopefully make it easier for you to follow along at home. Getting the distances is also something that's become easier as I've gone. Initially, I started off by using the laser and I'd keep a record on a piece of paper as to what my distances were and things like that. That's much simpler now. I've got a shot scope GPS watch where you can go out and track all of your distances, your shots and everything like that during the round, log in afterwards and get all of the data that you can apply to your shot tracers in the edit. Again, I'll put a link to that product below in case it's something that interests you. Mostly the other big option that you've got is around the microphones. And from what I've found, you either use something like this, which is a wireless mic, or you do voiceover recordings at home in the edit. What I've found is that doing the home voiceovers is the easiest, mostly because it means that you don't have to fuss around with microphones on the course and you can play the voiceover over the top of shots. So I think it lets the video run faster, but possibly you miss out on some of the reactions on the golf course that you get when you're actually hitting the shots. Be good, be good. Oh, spin, spin. I'm happy to take that. And this is the talking on the course, not the voiceover. Which do you prefer? Once you've got all of that, you have to put everything together in the edit. And that's when you can add any graphics, voiceovers, any music that you might want to add. And that's definitely the longest part of all of this. It's also a part though that I really enjoy. This is an example of one of my edits in Final Cut Pro. I like the editing process, so I go into a bit of detail, but everyone will generally find their own way of doing this. One thing you also might notice in my videos is that I try to stay away from asking too often for the subscriptions and the likes and the comments. About 90% of the people watching the video though aren't subscribed. It means so much when people take that second. It's really difficult to feel that connection at times and it really does make a big difference. So just taking that one second to hit subscribe or like or leave a positive comment really makes a huge difference to people like me doing YouTube. So there you go. In a nutshell, I think that's that. Like I said, the course vlogs are probably the easiest to do because it's just going out and playing a round of golf and you can do as much or as little as you want in the edit. If you're someone that watches golf on YouTube, hope you found this interesting. Big thank you again to everyone that's watched the videos so far, subscribed and everything like that. And if you want to see one of these rounds in full, I'll put a link up to the latest round that I played and vlogged for you. Hope to see you in another video soon.